What is up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today's US video is eight worst places in the US. This is a Geography King video. We do enjoy Geography yeah. King, don't we? Smash that like button if you enjoy this kind of content. Smash that subscribe button in the comments below. No, smash wow. the subscribe button in the, the little box down below. Yeah, it's red, isn't it? Yeah. I think it's red. Smash that subscribe well, button. Yeah, it might, it might say subscribe, but it might say subscribed if you are a legend. Yeah, it should say subscribed. And by the way, pro tip, if you click it, and it do, if it doesn't say subscribed, and you click it, you it'll say luck. subscribed. Oh. And you get good luck. If you click it, you get good luck. Get good luck for the rest of the year. Guaranteed. Definitely the rest of the day. Yeah, maybe the rest Guaranteed. of the day. Um, hit that notification bell as well. You absolute legends would seriously appreciate it. It's a 60 minute video. It's quite a long one, so we'll get straight into it. It's quite different to what we normally do. It's the eight worst places, but it's awesome to see. I say awesome. That's completely the wrong wording, isn't it? I'm laughing at the fact that you said... It's a long one, so we'll get straight into it. I mean, I but talk. this is a little yeah, yeah. <laughs> No, I think of things to say. I, I, I'm a pro awesome waffler, can I just talk? It's interesting, I think it's the word. <laughs> right, you mean. Interesting is a word I'm looking for, just to see the different yeah. sides of it. And um, yeah, it's just interesting, especially when it's a place you've hardly ever been to yeah, yeah. and you've learned so much about the good aspects. It'd be interesting to yeah. learn so much about the worst. Smash the like button, guys, smash the subscribe button, and let's check out the eight worst places in the US. Quickly, give us a like goal 1,475. A very low one, so we'll go 2,475. All right. 2,000? Yeah. 2,475. Let's get. Howdy. Howdy. It's Kyle from Geography Howdy. It's Kyle talking about the oh, Asian stories. stole my line. I US. always think right the bat, stole my I line. This isn't intended to be a funny video. <laughs> I'm not going to make fun of these places or the people that live there, but just give a general overview of some of these really bad places in the country. A lot of us, including myself, live a pretty cushy life where we don't experience these places or this lifestyle firsthand. And for millions of Americans, this is what they experience every single day. These are the places that people live, and a lot of us are just completely oblivious to the other Americas. So in this video, I want to count down the eight worst places in the entire country. All these aren't... This is his opinion, by the way. No, I was... Old subjective. Oh, no, not even ours, because we can't... I don't think we can name them because we haven't been to the places. But you guys may have a different list. It's all personal opinion, all subjective. Um, so let us know... Let us know your best places in the comments. Your top three best places you've been to. Mine's um, New York. New York. New York. We've only ever been to New York, Actually, way. you could say New Jersey, because we did go to New Jersey for a little we bit. We technically popped into here to Woodbury Common. That's it. <laughs> aren't going to be a big shock to you. A lot of Americans know that some of these places I'm going to mention are just truly awful places, but... You know, other ones might be a bit of a surprise to you. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. I'm going to first start talking about the worst urban ghettos. Not all urban ghettos are created equal. And I'm going to talk about the three worst ones. The largest one, the most dangerous one, and the poorest one. And they aren't all the same. So I'm going to start with the largest one, which is Detroit. Detroit has the single largest area of just continuous urban blight in the entire country. And so much of the city is empty, derelict, and just truly ghetto. I've heard a lot that of it, you can't even really call it ghetto because it's just empty. It's almost like an urban ghost town. Oh. And it's just really bad. It's improved a little bit through the years. I've been visiting Detroit for about 20 years and there have been some minor improvements, but it's still really, really bad. And so Seven, many so stretches of town are just, yeah, pop you know, again, they're just empty and derelict. And they're starting to do things with some of the old factories and with some of these, you know, old plants and things, but it's been a very slow process. And in 20 years, wow. not that much has been done. So but the past couple of years have seen a little bit of improvement, but still, Detroit is truly awful. So it's random. The but it's so sad, don't you think? Like, I bet there was like kids running in and out of there once upon a time. Definitely. The houses, people with families lived in there. Yeah, I think with Detroit, I, I may be wrong, but um, I swear I heard this in when I was doing my architectural um, higher certificate that it had the car industry there. And it was a massive industry. Then I think I think it was a car. I may be wrong. And then the car industry left Detroit. To people. And there weren't any jobs. Mm. And then people weren't getting paid. So and it was just an absolute nightmare. So everyone just left. Literally just left the buildings yeah. because it just nobody wanted to buy. It was worth nothing at that time. I and mean, then it's been just left rotting for however long. Mm. But like he said in the video, I have heard that it is on its way back up. It was mm. getting more work. But again, you guys know more than me. That's just me kind of remember it. But I say it is sad, isn't it? Mm. Kids would have been in that candy store so much, and now it's just they say it's yeah. like that. It's imagine just... living right next to it. What? That looks like people living there, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. No, but so... like imagine living if once upon a time. Oh, if you live there, you just pop out for some sweets. It'd be annoying with all the kids screaming though, wouldn't it? Every day coming to the candy store. I don't know if kids scream every time they go in a shop. I don't know. Sweets. <laughs> just you. <laughs> yes, yeah, just me. Even today. You can relate to all children. <laughs> 
The most dangerous urban ghetto is Chicago, and the stats here are ridiculous. Lawrence, the south and west side of the city have just seen it's almost different like parts of no in it. Not the whole Chicago. In. The gang-related murders, the violence going on there shooting. is incredible. Something you would expect to find in, say, Brazil or places like That's, that. This is truly, this truly bad. And I haven't actually been through the worst parts of the ghetto in recent years when it's gotten really, really bad. I probably wouldn't either, but. You know, it is mostly gang on gang violence. So if I were to drive through there, I probably wouldn't have any issues. But at the same time, I still wouldn't be doing it. No it's point crazy. risking it. I don't know how it's gotten so much worse through the years, but it is such a huge area of just violence. And it is the most dangerous ghetto in the country, even though I guess you could say per capita the crime isn't as bad as, say, maybe St. Louis or other cities. But Chicago is so much bigger than St. Louis that the ghetto is just so much larger and the overall amount of violence is incredible. But the difference between Chicago and Detroit is that not all of Chicago is like that. A lot of Chicago is very nice, very yeah, we've wealthy, seen the nice bits, really cool we? neighborhoods there. Most of Detroit is pretty ghetto. There isn't much to Detroit that isn't nasty. Most of Chicago is at least okay, but the, the parts of town that are ghetto are really bad and really violent, and it's the most violent inner city in the country. But neither Detroit nor Chicago are the poorest ghetto in the country. That goes to New Orleans. And New Orleans' ghetto is more like a third world area. It's just really wow. bad. It's just so much it's more like poverty stricken than the larger ones. Yeah, I mean, I think there is a lot of like uh, caravan homes in the States, like a lot of down mm. south. But I guess maybe it's the poorest, again, this is just me guessing, I won't, won't stand it for too long, is because of like the floods yeah. and stuff like that. And it's just constantly getting hit weather wise, so it just hasn't got the mm. money to keep rebuilding. Let us know in the comments what you guys think. But, that's north, guess. but the only saving grace for New Orleans' ghetto is that it isn't huge. It doesn't go on for miles and miles and miles, but pound for pound, it's people it is the same, worst. It? it really does feel like you're in a third world country. It's just so bad and so poor. And so, and it's not just because of Hurricane Katrina. It was like that before. And there was mm -hmm. talking, sort of joking, sort of serious, that Hurricane Katrina might be in the long term good for New Orleans as it cleaned out some of these horrible below sea level areas, the Ninth Ward specifically. Oh there's been some new building there, some green kind of construction and things going on. But the overall ghetto scene in New Orleans is still very, very bad. And it's a lot poorer than Chicago or Detroit. But again, the overall ghetto size isn't anywhere near as big. So those are the three worst urban ghettos in the country. Detroit's the largest, Chicago's the most dangerous, and New Orleans is the poorest. And these are often associated with high crime and poverty, but Urban ghettos are not as destitute as some other parts of the country, so urban areas aren't the only horrible parts of the U.S. Some of the rural parts of the country are where you have the most third world, the most poverty, and just the most destitution. So now I'm going to talk about the three worst rural parts of the country. The first of these rural areas I'm going to talk about is eastern Kentucky slash southwestern West Virginia, and this is just a huge area of almost continuous poverty. Whereas an urban ghetto might constitute a few neighborhoods over several miles in a city, this part of Appalachia is several counties that goes across state lines and it's just a huge area state, where you can drive for states. over an hour and never really leave an area of poverty. There's a very tiny middle class and almost no upper class. Wow. A lot of people in this region oh don't days. have running water or electricity, which sounds crazy for a rich country like the US, but it's true. You can live in the worst ghetto of Detroit or Chicago, but you probably have electricity or running water. You might not be able to pay the bill for the electricity, but the infrastructure is there. A lot of these places in the rural Appalachia region, the infrastructure isn't even there in the first place. This area is so I mean, so I, I do by, just want to add, by the way, I know Paul's got a bit already. We're not judging one bit because we know the UK has places like this, which mm. it's, it's, it's a shame it's anywhere. Mm. We know every country has it, so it's not us going... You guys have these horrible places. I can't believe it. It is just shocking to see you whenever you see it anytime. Mm. But we do understand it is everywhere in the world. Mm. But it's awful that people live like that, you know? Yeah. It's not. It's, it seems not fair at so times. You might you know? have to drive a half a an hour just to get to a grocery store. <laughs> There's a lot of beer It only has frozen, boxed, and canned stuff. You might have to drive more than an hour just to get to a decent hospital. This wow. area is a huge food desert. It's a huge healthcare desert. Healthcare problems are really bad. Obesity is really bad. Dental hygiene is really bad. A lot of the drinking water isn't even safe. I mean, it smells weird. It looks weird. And half the time I go to West Virginia, there's always some county there where there's a boil water advisory to not drink the water. That's an extremely common thing. And this so is in the U.S. Really, That's mentally really yeah. bad. And almost, like I said, third world-ish because it's just extreme poverty. It's a large region. 
And you also have a huge issue with drugs. You have a lot of people that are hooked on painkillers and crystal meth, and it's really sad. I've walked around some of these small towns in southwestern West Virginia, like a town called Logan, and you just see so many people whose eyes are glazed, and they're kind of shuffling their feet, and they look like zombies. It's just, it's just so sad that how many people are just hooked into this cycle of poverty and drugs, and it doesn't really seem to be getting any better. In fact, it seems to be getting a little bit worse. The I second if you live like that, area that yeah. takes you up take a large away, is the Mississippi River area of northwestern Mississippi and southeastern Arkansas. This is just, again, just true poverty through a large area, and it's also kind of third world -ish. You have a lot of areas where there's no electricity or running water, and you, know, you see people living in these conditions. You can't believe this is the U.S., but it is. And this area has been poor forever, going back to the days of slavery and sharecropping, and just this area hasn't really ever improved. And this is where the blues music came from. I mean, you can see why it came from this area. So, so much of our music is because of how bad this area is. People had the blues, singing about it, and it just moved into rock and roll and all that kind of stuff. So, I guess you can say there's one good thing about the poverty in this area, but it is still very destitute. It's very similar to the Appalachian area, but... You know, the geography is different. It's flat, really hot and humid as opposed to you know, mountainous and stuff. But it is pretty much the same kind of thing. Just a large area of just extreme poverty, and it never seems to get much better. There's very little economic opportunity in this region. It's not like there's any companies moving to northwestern Mississippi or southeastern Arkansas. So what the future holds for this area, I don't know. It's kind of like Appalachia. They can't just keep holding on the coal. It's, it's going away. So what are these areas doing to improve themselves? I don't know, but for right now, it's really bad. And kind of like the Appalachia area, it's not really getting any better. And I guess that does make sense. The U.S. is that big, mm -hmm. but a company isn't going to go to this place, which is got a load of poverty. It's run down. They're going to go, oh, the U.S. is so big. We're not in half of these places. Mm -hmm. Let's go to a city where we're going to make more money and stuff like that. That is a reality, isn't yeah. it? So if you live there, you can't afford to go anywhere. No money, no business is coming to you. To yeah be part of and make money it's a very it's, it's a like a bad cycle isn't it very very bad cycle I'm, it's awful to see it absolutely mm. awful it just shows how lucky we are yeah. it really really does and um, yeah it's, it's just so sad to see and the last of the three rural areas i'm going to mention is by far the worst one and this is the pine ridge reservation of the lakota sioux in southwestern south dakota the level of poverty on the reservation is astonishing. It's almost unbelievable. I've driven through it a couple of times on my trips to Badlands National Park and some of the other areas in southwestern South Dakota, and you just can't believe you're in the U.S. when you see some of this stuff. You see people living in burned-out buses, old RVs, houses made from pallets. I mean, half the time you can't tell if somebody actually lives there until you see an electric meter on the side of this burned-out wow. bus with the dials turning. So it's I mean, it's crazy that people live in these kind of conditions. And again, it's, it's kind of embarrassing that this is the U.S. and these are the indigenous population and they're living in some of these horrible conditions. But it was bad as a native population has been treated through the years. This is the absolute worst reservation in the country. The poverty is astonishing. And kind of like you have the painkiller problem in the Appalachia region, you have an alcoholism problem on the reservation. Which is probably why the only thing that looks modern there is Budweiser, is Budweiser which is the alcohol thing, because that's what everyone wants, and I guess. of course, people make the jokes about the drunk Indian kind of stuff, but it, it really is sad. I mean, you see people just staggering around, people just passed out in front of a building, and you drive through some of these towns, and you, it's like, is this a movie set? Is this really what this place is like? And it isn't all entirely like that, but most of it is, and the better parts of the reservation would still be extremely poor for most of the country. And the last two that I'm going to mention are on this list because of how strange they are. I don't mean strange in a good way, like Santa Cruz, California, Burlington, Vermont, or Key West, Florida. I mean strange in a bad way. The first are the twin cities of Hilldale, Utah, and Colorado City, Arizona. This is basically one town that straddles the state line. And this is the area that's well known for being the home of the fundamentalist wing of the Mormon church. The best word I can think of to describe these two towns is creepy. And I've been there a few times. Mm. The first On time was about picture, 15 yeah, years ago or so before the cult leader Warren Jeffs was arrested. The second time was not long after he was arrested. And the third time was just a couple is years ago, you know, several so, years yeah. after he was arrested. So I've gotten to see how much the town has changed and how much it hasn't changed. It's hard to say for sure, but I would estimate that about 75% of the population there are members of the FLDS church, and it's really easy to point them out because they all look the same, they all dress the same, group. and they all have the same <laughs> hairstyle. And 
I'm not trying to be joking around here, but they're also kind of inbred. There's such a small number of people that are part of this church and they're only getting with each other. The gene pool just isn't that large. A lot of those people just kind of have the same facial features and they all look the same. So it's just, again, really creepy. But for the longest time, it wasn't just... Definitely avoid that town, it seems like. <laughs> Definitely avoid yeah. that. <laughs> Definitely. It was also scary because the city was officially a fundamentalist city. The mayor, the city council, and most frighteningly, the police were all part of this cult. And there were many, many stories of people that were not members of the church being harassed by the police, arrested for no reason, wow. evicted from their homes. I don't seem and real, does it? The worst story I ever like heard was one where the police rounded up all the dogs of the non-FLDS members and killed them en masse. And if you're a non-FLDS member the living there, who are you going to complain to? The police, the mayor, obviously not. They're the say, problem. Poor dogs. And the state of Utah has always said we don't condone these polygamy cults, but they've also always looked the other way because this, of course, was known to be going on for the longest time in these cities, but the state did absolutely nothing about it. And it wasn't until some young girls came out and said that Warren Jeffs raped them that the state finally had to do something about it. So he was arrested, tried, and convicted, and he's now currently in prison. But things didn't I mean, stop. It's pretty sad that it kind of got to that stage. You mm. know what I mean? Like, you knew something was going on. Mm. Stop still it. Still running early, the cult, still running the town from prison. I think his brother was acting as the liaison for him, and things didn't change at all for several years, even after he was arrested. In the past few years, the police have been broken up. There's a new mayor. There are real elections. But the last time I was there, it still had that kind of creepy feel to it. So I'm sure it's gotten better, but it still didn't seem quite right. And Especially with the history of the folks that place the FLDS as well. church yeah, have definitely. moved. They're starting to go to other places, trying to take over other towns. But you know, I think things have probably certainly improved for the non-FLDS members of that town. But it is still really creepy there. And I know I said at the beginning that this isn't trying to be a funny video, but this last one is kind of funny just because of how ridiculous it is. And that's Bombay Beach, California. It is a beach, but it isn't along the ocean. It's along the Salton Sea in the southeastern corner of the state, out in the middle of the desert. Wow. It's below sea just level. Just in the desert. It's wow. the lowest community in the U.S. And it's just truly, truly awful, but also really, really strange. The Salton Sea what isn't supposed to place. exist. It's there because of a levee that broke and the water just kept running down and just formed this lake. It's so kind when of it like first beach. happened, it was like, oh, great. There's this oasis in the desert. We're going to form these beach resort towns. And Bombay Beach was one of them. So at one point, it was kind of a place to go to go to the beach, hang out, get a burger, get a few beers. But it is nothing like that anymore. But as the resort oh. aspect of it went... <laughs> we wanted a cheap holiday, babe, by the beach. <laughs> In way, the water was getting more and more polluted. People weren't going there anymore, so people were moving out of the town. So it kind of has a ghost town feel through a lot of it. There's empty shells of so buildings. Does anyone even There's that? just random mm. cars here and there. There's furniture and appliances all over That's the place. There are pianos, yes. just stuff that when people left, they didn't take with them. A lot of the folks that remained took some of those old buildings, just kind of made like weird artistic stuff out of it, like turned old beams into like shapes and things. And just, it's just so weird. And there's like a little stage out there where they'll do live plays. And there's like a drive-in where Mm. a bunch of old cars are facing a movie screen. It is just a incredibly weird (laughs) place. So if you're driving through this part of the country, check this place out because it's just so absurd. There's nowhere else like it in the country. Seems it's so almost strange, like the people it? that live there revel in the absurdity. They love it. This isn't the same as these poverty-stricken areas in these other parts so of the country. I mean, these are not <laughs> rich people, but they want to be there. These are just really weird people on the fringe of society. And if you're on the fringe of society, there can't be many better places to go than Bombay Beach. End of the day, if they're happy as well. If they're they are happy, happy yeah, yeah. and loving it, fair play to them. It was weird because that movie theater seemed quite modern. It seemed like yeah, quite well old, done. Old cars. Old cars, but then like you look at everywhere else, it's just completely run down. Yeah. But it's a good job of the, the driving theatre looks all right. Yeah, <laughs> like, it doesn't work. But as long as they're happy, it doesn't make yeah. a difference, does it? But what about the beach itself? Is it nice? No. It is like the most awful beach you'll ever go to. It looks nice and white. You walk out there and it's not sand. It's all oh, dead fish oh. scales, fish bones. It's horrible. The water yeah, is so going. polluted Ew. that it can't even sustain any life. So these fish just wash up, and you can imagine how that smells. Oh, my God. And as awful as it smells, there is someone that's going to love it, 
your dog. I was there with Aww. my dog, and he was having the time of his life. His nose was up in the air. He was like, wow, these are the greatest oh smells gosh. ever. He <laughs> loved it. But no matter how much your dog will love it, you will hate the smell. <laughs> it is putrid. So those are the eight worst places in the country. And this is There you go. Let us know what you think of that in the comments. Again, this is Kyle's list. Mm -hmm. Everyone will have different things. There were some unique ones in there, some creepy yeah. ones, and then some just really sad ones. I don't want to be the fish. Definitely not the fish. Um, hit that like button if you enjoyed it. Hit that like uh, so subscribe as well. We seriously so appreciate that. I guess it just puts into perspective how lucky we are, yeah. how potentially lucky you guys are as well. And if you're not lucky, we're sorry and we hope you're all okay. Um, and it kind of puts back, like the little little things you stress about on a day to day basis. Stuff like that, in context, it's yeah, it's absolutely ridiculous. You know what I mean? Compared to what other people mm -hmm. go through. And we hope if anyone is living in that situation or something like that, that you can one get help. And then hopefully you can turn your life around or get it to improve somehow if you're not happy. And if you are happy, go for it. Exactly. <laughs> That's the main thing in life, being happy. So smash that like button, guys. Smash that subscribe button. And uh, we'll see you Have a fantastic day. And we'll see you, legends, in the next one. Peace.